Our year in review series continues as we look back on achievements in transport and mining for 2019. On the matter of transport, please be careful on the road. That cannot be overstated. More than 420 lives were lost in traffic crashes in 2019. Families in mourning, loved ones gone, and financial strain on the country. Reduce your speed and buckle up. There's no need to prove your driving prowess to anyone. Also, drop the aggression. Be a courteous driver. Let it start with you. This is Jamaica Magazine. I'm Adrian Atkins, and thanks for joining us. It all unfolds now. Jamaica, this is the national cleanup crew. Come join the fight, stop mosquito from bite you. That me, we are go clean up school, workplace, home, and community too. Let us fight against dengue. Join the national dengue cleanup crew as we search for and destroy mosquito breeding sites from January 24 to January 26, 2020. Jamaica, this is the national cleanup crew. Come join the fight, stop mosquito from bite you. Mosquitoes wanted dead, not alive. A message from the ministries of health and wellness, culture and local government. Good day, I'm Lorraine Mendez and this is your JIS News for Tuesday, January 21. The Statistical Institute of Jamaica Statin is reporting a 6.2% inflation rate for the 2019 calendar year. This follows an increase of 0.5% for the month of December and is recorded in Statin's Consumer Price Index, CPI. Director General Carol Coy says the main contributing factors for the December index were a 1.5% increase in housing, water, electricity, gas and other fuels. She also indicates that there was a 0.5% increase in food and non-alcoholic beverages. The movement for the division, housing, water, electricity, gas, and other fuels, was due mostly to higher rates for electricity, water, and sewage. The increase for the heaviest weighted division, food, and non-alcoholic beverages, was mostly as a result of higher prices for vegetables, as reflected in the 0.7% increase in the index for the class, vegetables, and starchy foods, and a 0.5% increase in the index for meat. Ms. Coy was speaking during Statin's quarterly briefing on Friday. The Director General says the inflation rate to date for the 2019-20 fiscal year is 5.5%. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is assuring the public that Jamaica has no case of a new strain of virus that's causing respiratory illness. In a release issued yesterday, the ministry said the virus, which was under investigation in Wuhan City, China, had been exported to Thailand and Japan. Acting Chief Medical Officer Dr. Karen Webster Carr says Jamaica has a robust surveillance system already in place to detect emerging diseases. She says the health ministry has activated measures to prevent and contain the disease in the likelihood it reaches our shores. These include surveillance, early detection, and rapid isolation and treatment of all cases. Reports are that China has a cluster of pneumonia cases caused by a new strain of the coronavirus in Wuhan City, and officials have linked the viral infections to the seafood and wildlife market. The Chinese authorities are investigating whether any animals were infected with the virus. In the meantime, the Ministry of Health is advising travelers to the affected areas to take the necessary steps to prevent any introduction of the disease into Jamaica. These include avoiding close contact with people suffering from acute respiratory infections, as well as practicing good personal hygiene. Culture Minister Olivia Grange has dubbed as a success the one-day docking of the Marilla Discovery 2 cruise ship in Port Royal. The minister says the ship's crew and passengers expressed satisfaction with the offerings and also that the visitors were in awe with the culture and history of the over 500-year-old city. Ms. Grange made the comment last night shortly before the crews departed the island. We could not believe what they, they, they uncovered coming here to Jamaica and coming to Port Royal. Marella Discovery 2 arrived about 8 o'clock Monday morning with more than 2,000 passengers and crew on board. Minister Grange says a number of Port Royal residents were singing praises of the ship's stop at the port. She adds that the wider Kingston area also benefited as there were tours outside of Port Royal. Kingston and Port Royal is to receive one cruise ship every month up to May of this year. Meanwhile, Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett says close to 100,000 tourists have visited the island within the first two weeks of January. 
This is a 4% increase compared to the same period last year. We probably call this the high season. So okay. the high season has started with yes. a bang. Um, December was very strong. It was one of the best Decembers we've ever had. And now um, January is going well. We are um, up some 4% now. Um, but then that's the middle of the month. Minister Bartlett was speaking on JIS's Get the Facts recording recently. He says the country is expected to clear 200,000 visitors by the end of this month, which will bring arrivals to a 5 to 6% increase. Approximately 44 pounds of ganja have been sold from a compound to the medicinal marijuana industry under the Alternative Development Project. The update came from Industry State Minister Floyd Green during a presentation to Parliament last Tuesday. Minister Green said throughout the year more emphasis will be placed on increasing the number of traditional growers participating in the program. We've now developed some guidelines for our alternative development program and what we'll be doing in 2020 is looking for more community groups of traditional growers, Rastafarian or not, that we will engage and provide the technical support for them to transition into the medicinal marijuana industry. The Alternative Development Project was implemented as a strategy to transition traditional cannabis farmers into the regulated environment. The aim is to provide access to quality-controlled cannabis for medicinal purposes in keeping with government policy. The program is also being used to promote sustainable economic development and poverty reduction. And finally, five young Jamaican filmmakers have been awarded one-year membership with the Jamaican Film and Television Association JAFTA for outstanding performance in the European Union short film competition. The five youngsters were chosen from a group of 22 finalists who submitted three to five minute short films depicting the theme or environment, a heritage to be protected. For Best Film, Darren Douglas received an all-expense-paid trip to Germany to pursue a short course at the Met Film School in Berlin in March. Daniel Mullings received an iPad Pro for the Best Storytelling Award, Kemaine Booth a professional camera for the Best Videography, and Latanya Martin a MacBook Pro for the Best Editing. Meanwhile, Javar McLean will receive film training from Jamaican company Frame of Reference Post Production for Most Passionate Film. I'm truly happy to be here because the objective of this program goes right to the heart of what my ministry is about and what needs to happen in Jamaica if we're going to achieve our goal of sustainable prosperity for all, all our people. The competition was therefore as much an opportunity to identify the fantastic talent in Jamaica uh, as much as about building production skills and networking for professional development, uh, but it was also about empowering the contestants to advocate for the change that you want to see. The EU short film competition was first launched in September 2019 and targeted young amateur Jamaican filmmakers 18 to 25 years of age. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Lorraine Mendez. Thanks for watching. A common practice while socializing, celebrating, or just relaxing is the consumption of alcohol. To some, this is second nature. All too common also are the negative effects that drinking has on the human body. While occasional drinking is not necessarily a problem, it's the excessive intake that can have severe consequences. The effects of too much alcohol consumption include blurred vision, breathing problems, impaired judgment, concentration problems, slurred speech, and of course, addiction resulting from long-term use. Now, these effects may vary based on a variety of factors such as how much you drink, how often you drink, your age, health status, and family history. Alcohol use does not have to be reckless. Here are some tips to practice responsible drinking. Plan ahead. If you plan on drinking at an event, get a designated driver. Hold it down. Shoulder. Shoulder. Yeah, 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 yeah. Set your own limit. No much is too much. Know your family history. If you come from a family with a history of alcohol dependence, you might want to limit your drinking. Remember, responsible drinking is a very simple thing.
The Transport and Mining Ministry improved land and air transportation in 2019. Take a look at these and other achievements. The Honorable Robert Montague, standing at the helm of the Ministry of Transport and Mining, loaded the Minister's bus and drove it to a prosperous and successful 2019. Last year saw Cabinet's approval of having video surveillance on road networks across the island. This was then followed by Cabinet giving the green light for the private sector to partner with government to implement video enforcement technology on our roadways. Efforts are being made to ensure that the requisite roadside objects are strategically placed on the network to ensure the best chances of survival should a traffic accident occur. And the way was then paved for 700 traffic cameras to be installed in specific parishes. But that was only the beginning. New applicants for public passenger licenses are now required to have an electronic fleet management system on their vehicles, whereas existing holders of public passenger licenses will have until April 1 of next year to get the GPS tracker. The public transportation system was further enhanced through a contract signed between the Jamaica Urban Transit Company and El Hydro Company to help reduce JUTC's oil bill. And the Transport Ministry's Road Safety Unit is now equipped with five portable breathalyzers, valued at $2,500 US dollars. Every life we save on the road is worth every investment that we would have. So the transport system was now tailored to make Jamaica the place of choice to live. It was now time to have all that replicated on improved infrastructure, such as our roadways. Road improvements took place throughout the urban and rural corners of the island. And so, you know, as the days and the weeks are ticked off, rest assured that persons will start to not only see, but feel the benefits of the improved works that we have done. So there was land, but much attention was also given to transportation by sea. The nation's bunkering industry is now able to supply ships with LNG fuel, following New Fortress's investment in the industry. And we are open for business. Bunkering creates some 900 direct high-paying jobs in Jamaica and approximately 3,000 indirect jobs. So it is vital to our economy. Legislation to create a regulatory framework for facilitating the licensing of bunker operators and their vessels went through the final stages of the parliamentary process in 2019. A pathway was created for a reduction of the sulfur content in the island's marine fuel from 3% to 0.5%. Jamaica is on the leading edge of getting that fuel out there. So it is estimated that if we can get 10%, of the business, of the amount of ships that come to the Panama Canal, we can earn upwards of 3 billion US dollars as a well. And from the sea to air. In 2019, the Transport Ministry gave a propulsive force to the island's aviation sector. Ordinary Jamaicans now have the opportunity to travel by plane from one section of the island to another, as scheduled domestic flights are now available between the Ian Fleming International Airport in St. Mary and the Sangster International Airport and aerodromes in Montego Bay. These scheduled domestic flights mark a new and historic day in general aviation in Jamaica. Last year, Jamaica also formally signed an air service agreement to facilitate direct flights from South Africa to the Norman Manley International Airport. 
and more flights were rolling in from Orlando. As Spirit Airlines introduced non-stop flights between the Orlando International Airport in the United States and Jamaica. It is going to open up trading links, it is going to open up tourism, it is going to open up study, it is going to open up travel. And there was more. Government also handed over the management of the Norman Manley International Airport to Grupo Aeroportuario del Pacifico GAP. Under the agreement, GAP is responsible for improving the airport's land and air operational efficiency as well as financing. And the NMIA became authorized to conduct aerodrome operations. It says that the entity has met the requirements of civil aviation regulations and the conditions prescribed thereunder for the issuance of the certificate and is hereby authorized to conduct aerodrome operations. The Ian Fleming International Airport received an airport rescue and firefighting vehicle to assist with its emergency response program, while the Tinsipen Aerodrome received its very own pilot lounge, valued at $1.5 million. In 2019, the GISCO-owned alumina refinery in Nain, St. Elizabeth, experienced modernization and expansion works. I wish to remind this house and the people of Jamaica that the modernization and expansion program will be one of the largest investments in the history of this country. Total investment is projected at $1.1 billion when fully completed. Also, the United States government moved to lift the sanctions imposed on UC Rosal, the majority owner of the Windalco bauxite plant in St. Catherine. Following this, entities in Jamaica can now freely do business with Windalco without the threat of sanctions. This, Mr. Speaker, is positive news for the government and people of Jamaica. It is positive news for Windalco and its over 1,000 employees who had faced an uncertain future when the sanctions were initially announced. It is positive news for Jamaican companies and individuals that conduct business with Windalco. It is indeed positive news for the economy. In addition, the Mining Ministry's Quarry Advisory Committee has extended the quarry license for land mining operators from one year to up to 10 years. So that we are making the changes and the government is in full support of the mining sector. And the ministry partnered with mining company Geophysics Jamaica Limited to update the island's geological maps to allow new and potential mining investors to better search for minerals. So that was 2019 for the Ministry of Transport and Mining. And now we look to the year ahead. Okay, folks. Thank you for your cooperation. Your bus drive is over. In 2019, the Ministry of Labour and Social Security continued work to strengthen the labour market, create jobs and protect vulnerable citizens. Watch Jamaica Magazine on Wednesday, January 22, as our year in review series continues with a look at activities in the labor and social security portfolio. Up next, a roundup of activities by Prime Minister Andrew Holness during the past week. Overwhelming support for the plastic ban, national public key infrastructure project launched, and leaders join forces to pray for peace. You're watching Jamaica House Weekly. I'm Anthony Morgan. Minister without portfolio in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, Daryl Vaz, is expressing satisfaction with the overwhelming support for the ban on plastics. In Parliament last Tuesday, Mr. Vaz said over 90% of the Jamaican population supported the ban's introduction on January 1, 2019. The first of the three-phase ban targeted single-use plastic bags and plastic drinking straws. Since the ban, the country has witnessed a pronounced reduction of plastics in terrestrial and marine environment. We have observed significant behaviour and attitude change with regard to the banned items and Jamaican calling for the banning of more items such as plastic utensils, pampers and other plastic food containers. Mr. Speaker, there are several business opportunities for large corporations and MSMEs have also blossomed from this initiative with business being developed to specialize in the alternatives. 
The second phase, which came into effect on January 1, 2020, places a ban on local manufacturing and use of polystyrene or styrofoam products used in the food and beverage industries. Minister Vaz told Parliament that work was progressing on the collection and recycling of plastic bottles. In addition to doubling the money under the deposit refund scheme, the number of collection depots have been increased. The minister says 360 schools and 120 independent depots along with six mini-depots have been operational. Enforcement efforts have also been beefed up, with Minister Vaz reporting that six businesses and individuals have been fined for breaching the plastic ban. Another 30 businesses and individuals are now before the courts. Warning notices have also been issued to non-compliant persons and companies before en enforcement action was taken. Mr. Speaker, let me reiterate, the government will be taking strong enforcement action against those persons and companies that do not comply with the ban. The island's quest to become a digital society was bolstered Wednesday with the launch of a national public key infrastructure NPKI project. It's part of the National Identification System NITS program and will be rolled out over a seven-month period. The project is expected to secure the population's online transactions and provide security for the new national identification cards. Permanent Secretary at the Office of the Prime Minister, Audrey Sewell, says the new infrastructure will improve government service delivery to the nation. Her message was delivered by the Office of the Prime Minister's Chief Technical Director, Wayne Robinson. This PKI will be the foundation that various ministries, departments and agencies will utilize to securely issue and verify digital certificates. It is the foundation for a number of services that will be rolled out by the Passport, Immigration and Citizenship Agency, PICA, EGO of Jamaica Limited, and the Registrar General's Department, the RGD. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Prime Minister Holness, as he read the first lesson at the 40th National Leadership Prayer Breakfast Thursday morning. He joined leaders from government, the church, private sector and civil society to pray for divine intervention to bring peace to the island. Proceeds from the prayer breakfast will benefit the Violence Prevention Alliance's Child Resiliency Program. Prime Minister Holness is also in Port Royal recently. He toured the Port Authority's work on the Seawalk Bridge targeting cruise ships in the area. Mr. Holness also updated residents of the planned development for the area, which will include housing. We are doing a comprehensive plan to consider, first of all, the environmental and climactic risks. Because Port Royal is a low-lying area um, and it is susceptible to climate risks. There's no question about it. So we have to develop Port Royal and put in the infrastructure to protect against that risk. So it's not about just you know, pulling down the houses and lo relocating. It is about putting in the infrastructure, the flood walls, the revetments, all of those things. And that's it for Jamaica House Weekly. Be sure to join us next time for more of the news stories coming out of the office of the Prime Minister. Jamaica has been on a mission, a mission to eliminate corruption in all sectors of society. The main agency tasked with ensuring that the structures are in place to boost the island's fight is the Integrity Commission. A commission of parliament, the body is a consolidation of the Corruption Prevention Commission, the Office of the Contractor General and the Integrity Commission. It's mandated to investigate alleged or suspected acts of corruption regarding parliamentarians, public officers and public bodies, and instances of non-compliance with provisions of the Integrity Commission Act 2017. 
The Commission is also tasked with prosecuting acts of corruption and offences committed under the Act, as well as receiving statutory declarations submitted by parliamentarians and public officials related to their assets, liabilities and income. Operations at the Commission took effect in February 2018. Since its inception, the entity has submitted six investigation reports to Parliament, monitored over 500 government projects, completed eight inquiry management reports, and conducted over 100 site visits and meetings. The Integrity Commission has three divisions, Investigation, Corruption Prevention, and Administration. The Investigation Division examines allegations of corruption, monitors the award of government contracts, and looks into all matters related to licenses. The Corruption Prevention Division acts on the findings of the investigation branch by way of prosecution, as well as the seizure, forfeiture, or recovery of property related to acts of corruption. And the day-to-day -day running of the Commission is executed by the Administration Division, which also collects and routes corruption complaints and inquiries to the relevant divisions. To resolve complaints and investigations predating its establishment, the Commission formed five subcommittees, Information and Complaints, Investigations, Corruption Prosecution, Audit and Finance, as well as Internal Affairs. The Commission is operated by a team of directors. That includes Interim Executive Director Colonel Daniel Price, Acting Director of Information and Complaints Joy Powell, Acting Director of Investigation David Gray, and Director of Corruption Prosecution Keisha Prince. That body is guided by a team of commissioners. The team is chaired by retired Justice Seymour Panton and has as commissioners Pamela Monroe Ellis, Eric Crawford, Dr. Derek McCoy, and retired Justice Lloyd Hibbert. You may get in touch with the Integrity Commission at 16 Oxford Road or 45 to 47 Barbados Avenue, both in Kingston. Numbers to call are 876 929 6460, 876 926 2288, or 876 906 8314. We've come to the end of the show. Do catch us again tomorrow right here on this station. Another half hour of informative features await you. Until then, please send your feedback to jamaicamagazine at gis.gov.jm. You may also connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. On behalf of the entire production team here at the GIS, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thanks for watching. of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.